This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is the third lecture on vorticity, and in this lecture I will give a schematic on how to derive the vorticity equation, that is, an equation for the time evolution or the conservation of vorticity. In the previous lectures we've introduced the concept of vorticity. We have asserted that this is an important way of looking at the atmosphere. Therefore, since we're interested in the evolution of the atmosphere, we need a way to compute the change in vorticity. We have the tools to do this. And in particular, I would suggest going back and looking at an early problem where we calculated what is essentially a proxy for kinetic energy, which was the time rate of change of u squared plus v squared. The same sort of techniques will be used in the derivation of this equation. To give a hint, I present this set of linear algebraic equations and go, how do you solve it? I do this because, again, it has the same sort of techniques, and it is an equation that I find that many students will recall how to solve it in one of several ways from, say, an algebra or a linear algebra class. The basic idea of this equation is you want to eliminate some variables and, and you're going to do that by, say, multiplying this equation by, by 3 and this equation by 5, and then you can subtract out the x's and get an equation that's only in y, and it'll be equal to something over here. Alternatively, you could multiply this equation by 6, this equation by 4, add them up, eliminate the y's, and you'd have an equation in x. The basic idea is that you're going to multiply each of the equations by something, but if you thought about that more generally, you can think of an operator. You can operate on those equations. You can do something to the equation. It's smart to think about what you're going to do to it, and then you add them together. And when you do that, you have maintained the fidelity of the equations, and you might have a new way to look at what you have said in the equations. We're going to do the same thing here, which is we're going to pick the appropriate equations, and then we are going to operate on them, and we're going to then combine them. And the equations we're going to pick are going to be the horizontal momentum equations. What we want to do is to calculate the time rate of change of the vertical component of vorticity. And in the previous lectures, we said that the vertical component of vorticity was going to be k dot del cross u. Or you could also see it as a quantity that has a dv dx and a du dy in it. Hence, what we want to do is to write some combination correct combination of dv dx and du dy. In order to do that, what we will do is start with a simpler set of equations. As you will see in this derivation, even with this relatively simple set of equations, it gets pretty complicated. We'll go back to our definitions. The relative velocity is uv and w. The relative vorticity is dv dx minus du dy, which is equal to zeta. What we're going to do is now take derivatives of these equations. Rather than multiplying by 2 or 5 or something, what we're going to do is we're going to take the first equation, the zonal momentum equation. We're going to take the y derivative of that equation. We're going to take the x derivative of the meridional momentum equation. You should see the strategy unfolding here. You're going to see that by changing the order of differentiation, we'll be able to imagine a du dt turning into a d by dt of du dy. Same for v, and then we'll be able to subtract the equations. All I'm going to do here is to expand this out a little bit to give you a good starting point on it. This is the same equation as on the previous page with the exception that rather than having big parentheses around the whole equation, we've now taken the d by dy operator all the way through each term and the d by dx operator all the way through each term. We're then going to remember that the big d by dt 
is the material derivative, and that has a partial in it, as well as it has this advection term. And this advection term is where the real complexity is going to arise. Keeping the same idea in mind of spreading that derivative across the different components, we will have a d by dy of du dt, where the du dt here is the partial derivatives, and that should appear rather simple to you to invert the order of differentiation. But then we have this term, the d by dy of the advection term, and the d by d y of the fv and the d by the x of the fu and the d by dx of the advection term. All I will say here is when you're doing the derivation, you need to pay attention to the details of the calculus here. These are the places that you will potentially fall down, but you'll get back up and you'll be able to get to the correct representation of the time rate of change of vorticity. After you do a good job on getting those derivatives, you subtract the two equations. You're going to take du dy minus dv dx. It's a fairly long derivation, but here's the answer that you should be working towards, which would be d zeta dt plus u dot del zeta. You should recognize this as the total derivative of zeta, the vertical component of the relative vorticity. You're going to have this term, which is zeta plus f, which you should recognize from the previous lectures as something worthy of noting. Again, from the previous lectures, you should recognize this term, the du dx plus dv dy, as something. I'm going to leave it at that right now, that you should start to recognize these on your own, but we will identify them in a future lecture. Then we have this sort of complicated term here, a dw dx dv dz minus dw dy du dz. That one is less familiar to us. This term is an interesting and important term. And again, going back to some of the homework problems we did where we were looking at the divergence of the geostrophic wind, this term might be familiar to you. And then this term, of course, has got something to do with the pressure gradient. So here's a reasonable representation of the conservation of vorticity. It will be assigned as a homework problem. I just want to say there are other ways you can derive the vorticity equation. A straightforward way would simply be to use the definitions and take k dot del cross the horizontal momentum equation. If you are familiar with vector calculus and want to take it on that way, it's actually potentially quite a bit faster to do it that way. However, that requires you to know a technique that is perhaps a little more abstract than the straightforward manipulation of the partial derivatives. And with that, that is the end of a schematic of how to derive the vorticity equation.